Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right there. It was better without the mask. Everything's better without the mask, right? <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to spring Mount Sac style. <laughs> So good to see everybody. I don't know what happens in the middle, but <laughs> we've got the perimeters covered. <clears throat> Thanks for coming out, uh, making some time in your schedule. Uh, we're going to have the president join us in a few moments. But as we get started, you know the Techie Feeler counselor and me, uh, I want you to turn to somebody on your left if you're on the aisle. This aisle is not going to work. You have to, you, you might just share with that person. Turn to, um, so f turn to, let's start with the left, yes. Turn to somebody on your left and just let it out and complain about what's wrong. <laughs> oh. I didn't have to say anything else. Okay, that was dangerous. <laughs> so, the funny part was I didn't even get to finish my sentence. <clears throat> but obviously you had a lot to share, right? That's good. It was funny in the front row, because Francisco's sitting next to Silver. He says, thanks a lot, Audrey. <laughs> Inside joke. <clears throat> so, uh, and Zelda just laughed. She just thought it was funny. So now, turn to your right and talk to somebody about what's right, either with your life, what we're doing, uh, what's working, just something positive. So hopefully you'll have just as much enthusiasm <laughs> for what's going right.
Okay. Okay, so that was great too. Thank you for that. <clears throat> so the goal, people ask me, what's your goal for 2022? Or how do you, they also ask, what do you feel like going into 2022? So think of what word comes up if you were asked, what are you thinking about for 2022? Or how are you feeling? And you may say, exhausted as we start, um, continued uh, frustration, it could be hopeful, energetic, any number of those things. So my goal for us this year is just to try to get some balance, right? Because we've been out of balance for way too long and that's just challenging. So we know that each of you have faced personal challenges in your lives as well as challenges here at work. But you still <clears throat> get up in the morning and come to work and put your all into it. And we're so very, very grateful. <clears throat> Student services at Mount Sac has garnered quite a favorable reputation <clears throat> among students, community members, and colleagues from other colleges. And that's due to your dedication, your creativity, your innovation, all of the things that you do, the extra mile that you walk with your students and supporting your coworkers. So hopefully you get up in the morning and are happy at least to have this work to do in your life and hopefully that that's meaningful to you. <clears throat> but we know there's lots of challenges. And one of the most difficult challenges for all of us is the rules keep changing. Conditions keep changing. And we just like to have an answer. But remember that many of us who majored in the social sciences studied everything gray, not black and white, except for financial aid and admissions people. <laughs> Sorry, that was just a, a little joke. <clears throat> but sometimes being in the gray is, is really frustrating because you just want a clear answer. You want to know what's next. You want to know why. You want to know when and how. And sometimes we say to you, we're working on it. Or a little update, things have changed. Or we don't know yet. And you have to do the same thing with others that you work with and students who ask you questions. But think of it this way. In our government structure, at the federal level, we have the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC. The state, we have the State Public Health Department, as well as Cal OSHA. And we have the LA County Public Health Department. And then we have our Board of Trustees. So we're governed by all of them. And sometimes their interpretation or what they feel they're supposed to enforce differs. So just as we say, yes, this is what we're doing, always feel in the background, is some announcement gonna come out tomorrow and say it's changed? So I am not reporting on the mask mandate because I cannot tell you anything. I cannot interpret what the governor is saying or what anybody else is saying. We're not going to engage in anything dealing with negotiations because that's not my role. But what I wanna do is just answer any questions that you might have, so we'll have time for that. And share with you the, the current information as I know it. <clears throat> so for now, as you know, the Board of Trustees policies changed. So for winter and certainly now for spring, Students have to be vaccinated or have an approved exemption to be on campus taking classes in person, even if it's a hybrid class, <clears throat> using things like library, labs, tutoring, counseling that's in person. 
<clears throat> if they have an exemption, there's about 800 students that have an exemption, they have to test on a weekly basis. <clears throat> so there's a lot of work we're having to do. But thanks to all of you, all of you, you contacted students. You let them know what to do. And you saved thousands of them from being dropped. That's awesome. But let me take a bigger look at this. So literally <clears throat> two years ago in March, think of it, if you can remember, <laughs> where were we and what was going on? We were hearing all this stuff, that there's this virus out there and people are dying and it's mysterious and we're not sure where it's coming from and we're not sure what's going to happen next and we don't know how you get it or how you stay safe. And then by the middle of March, it all exploded. And in an instant, the majority, not all, the majority of what we did changed. We said, stay home and we'll help you as we figure out how you can work from home, how you can serve students, how you can attend meetings, how you can do the business of the college in a completely different mode. And if you were with us at that time, <clears throat> you had a gazillion questions. And we were all searching for answers. How were we gonna make that happen? But <clears throat> my phone has the history of what we do in student services in pictures. It, the announcement this morning said I was 97% full. <coughs> so that's not a good thing. <coughs> but I think it was March 18th, 2020, was our, Eric, if, if that's correct, our first, and Tanya, the first laptop loan that we ran. It was so early in our process, we weren't even wearing masks because the mask mandate had not come out yet. But we were already on the front line serving students who needed that technology to be successful. <clears throat> so we turned, we pivoted, we did what we could immediately two years ago. Some things stayed in person because we had instruction on campus and other services and things, but we did other things to still serve students. So <clears throat> Rigo and his team, Koji, we still had the food pantries, but they were drive-throughs, not drive-bys, drive-throughs. <laughs> and friendly faces. I remember when we, some of you participated in the student services, um, supply drive through because you're working from home. So you gave us a list of what you needed, file folders, stapler, pens, pads of paper. We packaged them up <clears throat> and you drove through. And you were just, we were so excited just to see each other and momentarily hand this off. And some of you came with your families in the car because they all loved coming to Mount Sac too. And the funny one was a financial aid group that happened to come at the same time and ended up having their cars parked in a circle off to the side so they could uh, reconnect in person. But we did what we could, right? So then we decided to come back. We came back in a bigger way in the fall than any other college. But we had never fully shut down. But when we came roaring back, I talked to my colleagues from other colleges. I said, yeah, we're back, we're doing this, we're checking that. And I said, how many students do you have on campus? Oh, about 3,000. How many do you have at Mount Sac on campus? Oh, about 18,000, big difference. So we always do things in a big way here, but we do it as a team. So we're very, very grateful to continuing to turn, to pivot, to regroup, to be creative, constructive, and think about what can we do to continue to work well together, to coordinate our efforts, to be safe and respectful, but still provide the services to our students. And you've all done that. You're all walking heroes in terms of the care and concern 
and the creativity you've provided to our students. So big applause. Thank you all for standing up and taking action. With that, I want to bring up uh, Dr. Bill Scroggins to come and say a few words. Oops. All right. Thank you, Audrey. Let's give a hand for our amazing leader of student services, Audrey Yama. Talking about uh, herding cats, oh, no, no, I shouldn't say that. It's been a real challenge, hasn't, hasn't it been over the last two years? But staying student focused, that's amazing, the work that your teams have done to stay student focused. And the fact that uh, oftentimes from week to week, the way you had to do your work was different. It was constantly creating solutions for the elements of the moment. And that is, uh, shows remarkable understanding of the scope of your work, that you were able to do those adaptations. The fact that you did so as a team working together speaks highly of your communications, which is another one of those challenges when you can't communicate in person. You have to find ways to effectively communicate. But that overall thread of being student focused is amazing. So uh, the, 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 the COVID uh, threat is getting better every day. We expect the county to change uh, masking requirements uh, in the next few days. We're gonna continue our commitment to the, uh, the, the faculty association where we've agreed that having uh, students uh, indoors during the semester will require masking. I think that's a good uh, commitment to continue to honor so that particularly in areas like in uh, the classrooms, in the library, in the counseling rooms, you know that you have the ability to provide in person that's safe, not, not just from all of the, the air filtering we're doing and the, the shields that we have up and the, the, when possible the the social distancing we have, but also to keep the, the, the masking as a commitment for students inside during the spring semester. But what that also means is we have a lot more flexibility in other work that we're doing. So that, that's a good uh, process going forward. I, I can tell you that we are gonna talk to the faculty association about possibly adjusting the, the agreement on uh, the masking requirement, because I think that'll be very difficult to enforce once students find out that the rest of the world is not gonna be masked. So look for some flexibility possibly coming out through negotiations relating to the masking mandate. Uh, I, I'd like to echo some of, of Audrey's kudos and just call out some of the things that I thought were particularly amazing. Uh, let's look at graduation, for example, how what you had to do to create graduation. There was a drive-through graduation that was just amazing. Uh, uh, we expected this many people and there were that many people showed up. It was uh, amazing that you were all out there doing that. And then after uh, our commitment to come back, uh, Audrey didn't mention the first thing that we came back, we came back with graduation on campus in the stadium and again, that's creating an entirely, a huge 900 some students, 10,000 visitors, creating an entirely new process. Yes, that was amazing. And uh, it was an amazing event, uh, very inspirational. And talking about a, a sign to students in the community that we're really committed to students and we're here in our great new uh, stadium with all the accoutrements that we had there and the fact that we were celebrating students in person. It was very reassuring to all of us for that hard, great way to cap last year to have that celebration. As we go into the fall with vaccination and testing, we had to create all of that system uh, as well. And now shifting 
uh, the winter and spring to the vaccine mandate shifting again. So you are the great chameleons. You, you change as the need of students uh, presents itself. Now looking forward, we're gonna continue this Mount SAC is back, getting students back on campus. And the reality will be that going forward, we will continue to be kind of two colleges, an in-person college and an online college. And we're working on what that means going forward. We know that the future of work, the future of learning, the future of the way you work, the future of the way students learn has been changed forever. It will always have high level of integration of technology, but also a component where services and instruction has an entirely online experience for a certain percentage of students that will be yet to be determined. We don't know what the demand for that will be, but it'll be higher than the six or eight percent we had before the pandemic. It'll probably be more like 30 or 35 percent. So that'll be like having an online college and an in-person college, which means for all the student services, you have to find a way of doing both. So we continue to experiment. We, we're going to experiment right now with an agreement with the Faculty Association on having counseling assignments being remote. And we're gonna collect a lot of data about how well that's gonna work. And as we always do, we analyze our work and use the best of existing practices. And that puts the whole management team and student services kind of as part of the research department. Let's see, is that working? Do we need to change this? How do we adapt to that piece? And again, now though, we're looking forward to the positive outcomes of online work and online learning. So you have all of our support from the board through senior management. As you come up with ideas, as you come up with the opportunities to make the student experience better, we will be right there with you. And finally, the biggest challenge is that we need to get our enrollment back. We need to get our students back. And we know that the COVID impact, uh, while it may not be as uh, uh, much of an impact on putting people in hospitals or putting their life at danger, it certainly has changed the outlook of the population we serve to say, wow, this is a scary world, my future is uncertain, I'm not sure that I can make that commitment to go to college right now. But we need to show them, as we did on that great events like Cash for College, that was a remarkable event. Those landmark interactions we have with students continue to be showing them that Mount SAC is the positive step for their future and giving them the option to work uh, in their studies, both online for learning and online for support. Everything from orientation, advising, and uh, being able to uh, file petitions for graduation, all of those solutions that you've worked on. Now we're gonna integrate that into this message to students that we're here for you, come back. Your future is bright. We're the hope for your future, and that will be uh, an amazing challenge to get even more impact to students as they come back with the, the new set of needs that we know that they have. We know that their family environment has been even more stressed. They, they probably have lost some family members, relatives, or friends. That b bears on their worldview. We know that a good chance that they or their family members or their friends have lost jobs or are now working for lower income. And the support that they're getting from the government gradually is, is seeping away and they're gonna be more on their own. Those are challenges in an environment where it's always been a, uh, a, a, a step of courage for students to come to us to come to our meetings, to get involved in learning, to make that commitment to stay in school. It's always been a challenge that your support, both in terms of financial and strategic support, but support from the heart is needed as well. 
So all, all I can say is that as we work to get more students back to campus and see their bright future and their hope, continue your student focus of the commitment, continue being part uh, research and development and part delivering the, the message from the heart, that mix of your ability to do both of those things at a high level is what's made our success in the last two years amazing, as Audrey pointed out, compared to other colleges that haven't had the kind of teamwork and commitment that you have shown. And it will continue as we bring students back and have them adjust to being back on campus, having hope in their future, having the support to overcome the challenges and, and even the wounds that they have in the last two years of COVID, of social stresses, of inequality, uh, and from economic stresses, from job loss and inflation. All of that are burdens that they carry right in to your orientation meetings, right into your counseling sessions, right into your financial aid advising, right into your providing of special services for populations by, like undocumented veterans, and the list goes on. Those challenges, they bring them with them, but you meet those challenges with them as you always have done. Thank you for your, your work through these difficult times and thank you for your vision and support as we bring students back to recover from the effects of COVID. Have a great day and uh, be present in all those meetings and share your ideas and inputs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scroggins, for constantly understanding the work we do and supporting us. It means a lot. Uh, sometimes we get asked, how, how does Mount SAC do what it does? We have support from the top. Our president believes in our work, and he supports us in any way possible, including funding and facilities, which are in staffing, which is always very, very important. So as we think back of where we've been, I'm gonna ask Rudy to make his way up here. I wanted to have you hear from one of our students about his journey. And although you hear about students' journeys all the time, and we're always reminded of that, it's always fun and good and refreshing and energizing to hear directly from one of our students. So, we're gonna ask Rudy a little bit about his journey. So Rudy, can you just give a quick introduction to yourself and how did you find your way to Mount Sac? Uh, my name is Rudy Castaneda and finding my way here was, uh, was rough, right? Um, I had my son early, probably about 20 years old how to figure out what to do with them, you know, how to feed them. I decided to do what uh, most of the men in my family do, uh, you know, truck drive and do a little hustling on the streets. Um, eventually, it got me into trouble and uh, lost some good jobs, lost relationships with my uh, son and his mom, and also, uh, you know, I had another uh, little boy with her. And uh, that five-year-old helped me uh, really open my eyes. Uh, he was about eight months years old, and um, he was, uh, he had, uh, well, he had a bunch of phlegm in his lungs, and uh, it could have turned to pneumonia, and it could have been bad, like he would have died. And uh, I didn't know that. Um, I was drunk. I was in my addiction. I uh, almost got us kicked out of the hospital because they took him away to help them, and you know, when, my, when I go to the room, the ER, uh, I'm looking at you know, my ex, and uh, she's like, she's crying. I'm like, well, where's the baby at? She's like, they took him. So I hear the baby, and you know, my, the way I am, uh, you know, my aggression goes, like my levels just goes up, and uh, I start walking towards there, and you know, the security guards right there, they're like, no, you can't go in there. I'm like, I'm going in there, and uh, I push them through, and uh, 
I see the nurse, she's trying to, you know, she's poking my son with the needle. And I was like, I'm like, what the hell? Like, you know, I got mad and uh, I didn't know, like, the baby didn't, uh, they, they, the veins don't develop right. So, uh, or they don't develop right away. So she's trying to find somewhere to, you know, stick the IV to help him out. And, uh, you know, at that time, they're ready to kick me out. They're ready, you know, to send us all out. But uh, the doctor there, she, she kind of explains to me, like, what's going on. And, and she just calms everything down. And I'm like, dang, like, like I could, you know, I could have put him in, in, a, in a, put us all in a uh, position we didn't want to be in. And um, anyway, uh, you know, I took that week off. And that whole week, I didn't drink. I didn't use. And I was like, damn, like, why can't I just do this? Like, you know, I got tired of being in uh, my addiction and uh, just, like, just, I guess, lagging, like, procrastinating whatever I was doing, you know? And um, not even that, like, a week after he was out of the hospital, I go back to my old ways. I get into a fight with my ex. We, I get kicked out. I'm back on the streets. I get into more trouble. And, you know, they, they send me some classes. I, I agree with the judge, whatever. And there, another doctor, Dr. Jimenez, uh, she helped me out. She got me to NA meetings, you know, AA meetings. And, uh, you know, my, my brother passed away in 2018. And uh, I go back to my addiction and uh, lose my license. I lose my license, I lose everything, you know. It finally caught up to me again. Another DUI. And I'm in the bomb park cell, just looking in the sky, like, looking for heaven. And I see these taggings and everything else. And then I'm like, man, like, I'm tired of this. Like, I'm done. And, uh, you know, the judge sends me to a rehab. So I go through a whole rehab. And they, they switch judges on me. And uh, one judge, he didn't give me no, no credit for anything I was doing. So I was mad, I was mad. And, you know, I'm like, whatever. He's going to send me all the fines. He's like, how are you going to pay for it? Blah, blah, blah. You want to do community service? I'm like, man, I'm not doing anything for you. Like, you went to jail. Send me to jail. That's it. And um, they do. And uh, I think it added up to about 60 days. I get there, and I don't even do 10 minutes. The deputy, you know, it's COVID this time. It's July 2020. The deputy's like, you want to go in there? There's COVID. Or you got to deal with all that. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to go in there. So he signs me out. He goes, here you go, crowd, time serve. So I'm like, I'm happy. You know, I didn't have to pay nothing. I didn't have to do no time. I didn't have to be in there again, you know, doing it with all the, you know, the little, little hate that goes on in there. You know, it's uh, segregated right there. So and I'm like, forget that. I'm going to do all that. And uh, my lawyer talked me into going to school. So I call over here, and then uh, I meet Sectino and Joe, and uh, they got me to the MMI meetings before, uh, before I even took any class. So I'm in, I'm in these meetings, and I'm hearing how the, how the students are struggling with finals and stuff. So I'm like, nah, I don't want to do this no more, you know? <laughs> and uh, I, I go for it. I was like, you know what? Uh, winter came last year, and uh, I took two classes, and I aced them both. So I was like, all right, I can do this. So give us an update now with where are you as a college student, how are you doing, and what do you think for your future? Well, now I'm, uh, you know, I'm part of the Rice Scholars. I work right there. They gave me some hours uh, yesterday. You know, sometimes my peer mentees, they, they hit me up. Yesterday, they hit me up all, all, all day. So <laughs> I got, you know, I worked with them, and uh, we got stuff done, and, you know, I'm um, I'm hopefully I'm graduating next year, 2023. I've been here full time and uh, I, I've been acing in every class so far. So it's uh, it's it's something I never had planned. Like I never planned this. You know, this is this is my plan. This this wasn't it. Uh, you know, when they say uh, yo, uh, pray and uh, watch, you know, pray and uh, pray, uh, watch what you pray for, cause it'll happen. You know, good karma comes your way and. Uh, you know, it, it could be nervous. It could be nerve-wracking, and uh, but I think I handled it. I mean, I've, I've stepped up to every challenge since a kid. I never had a pops. My dad wasn't around, so I'm still I'm still just a self-made man, lo learning every day. Uh, oh, not right now. 
Okay. <laughs> so Rudy's a great example of what we're about here because we accept everybody. And right now is an important time to go out and find the Rudys that are searching and looking for life and wanting to turn things around. And his great success story, uh, I just want to end with one thing. I, this is uh, something that Victor <laughs> shared. Um, did they ask you to help move some boxes and Rising Scholars the other day? Yes, they did. And, and what was your response? I told him, you know, I'm a scholar. Like, I ain't supposed to be doing this no more. <laughs> So you just never know, right? You never know when something you do is going to make a difference in a student's life. When a student walks on the campus, and uh, we were talking about this yesterday, Trey said they walk in the campus, they walk right through 9B and then go back home. Because it's intimidating and it's scary. But when you look out and you see a student that may just need some help or you just want to reach out, you just want to welcome them. How are they doing? Greet them, encourage them, or walk them to where they can get help. That's what we're all about. So they're going to queue up uh, the next new employees. Of, no. 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 Be a no. So we have another um, clip to sh uh, we have a clip to show you. Spectrum uh, TV did a, a view on uh, Mount Sac and transfer. And we wanted to share with you one of the student stories. Okay. So hopefully this will come on and you'll be able to see it and hear it. And, and their on. captions turned on? Track and headed toward their higher education goals. After dropping out of college when she had her first child at age 18, it was not an easy decision for Candace Arainen to go back to college 16 years later and now a single mother of four children. But Candace chose to restart her education at Mount San Antonio College in Walnut, California. Mount SAC, as it's called, is a community college that supports students of all ages on every level to achieve their academic goals. Back then, when I first started college, I was not interested in school, I was just, you know, messing around. But now that I'm older and I have responsibilities and I know what it means to actually be an adult, I'm here to learn and <laughs> succeed. Mount SAC ranks second among community colleges in California for transfers to the CSU system and seventh in the state for transfers to the UC system. Candace is working toward getting her Associate of Science in Nursing at Mount SAC and then she plans to transfer to a four-year college to get a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. I'm in the program EOPS, CARE, and um, they're amazing. It, they help me with child care and gas cards to get to and from school, three check-ins a semester, make sure that my grades are up to par, that I'm taking the classes that I need. So Okay. So we are everywhere, right? Now um, I'm going to turn it over to Tom because he's standing here. <laughs> this is really well scripted. I had something else, but I'll go sit down now and let him take over. <laughs> hey. This is how we work together now. So. I find if I just sit back, then I can't, uh, I can't participate, so I gotta kinda jump in on there. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, good to see you all. Even though it's uh, half of your beautiful faces and your beautiful mask, it's still good to see everybody uh, in person. Um, I have the privilege uh, each semester of helping to introduce our new employees. Um, I think most of our managers know the routine by now. We're gonna try to go in the order 
that we have on the screen that each manager will come up and introduce their new employees. I think this is why student services at Mount SAC is so great. We hire really good employees who put students first. And I want to thank all of you for your continued work that you do with our students. Um, you guys are tremendous. So if the managers and their new employees can start working their way up, that would be great. And then we'll have, uh, go in order, I'll introduce mine first and then we'll have uh, George, Manuel, Jesse, Malia, kind of go in the same order. You know, since the pandemic, it's since March of 2020, two years ago, we've hired, despite the freeze we, that was put on uh, new hires, we have hired 24 new employees in student services. That's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'll go first. Um, I've heard a lot of talk about reconnect um, and engaging our students in our enrollment. And uh, we have a new position, uh, the Dean of Student Engagement, and the person that's gonna lead those efforts is Tanya Robles. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to share just what an honor and a privilege it is to serve in this capacity. I've been at Mount Sac since 2007. I started as a classified outreach specialist. My first day on the job was actually Elmer Rodriguez's first day at outreach as well, so we're always gonna share that special bond. Go, Elmer. <laughs> and at the time, um, Ida was the coordinator of outreach. And how incredible is it to look back and think about the conversations that we had of where we saw ourselves in the future. And I know for Ida and myself, we always wanted to go into management and Elmer always wanted to be a counselor and here we are serving in this capacity. <laughs> the student engagement position provides support and oversight over four key areas that are related to onboarding of students and supporting current students, which is outreach, high school outreach, Promise Plus, InReach Services, and then also the Reconnect and Engage project, which you're, you're gonna hear about later today. But I just wanna thank you for all the work that you do. I know that I love Mount Sac, and I know a lot of you do too. Some of you have been here longer than I have. Um, and I just look forward to continuing to be committed to the students, to the college, and then to all of you as my colleagues and peers. So, um, I'm so glad to see your faces and look forward to working with you. All right. Next up is George. Hey, everybody. Uh, I just, this, this student engagement thing, I don't know if she's going to try to get people married or how, how it's all going to work out. But, you know, I'm, I'm excited, so we'll see. I'm, I'm happy for her. Uh, I, I, I'm actually up here to introduce um, one, of, one of our veteran employees. Miguel's been in our office about eight years now, started off as a student assistant, and then moved to uh, Mission Specialist 1. Now he's a Mission Specialist 2, and just want to squash any rumors. It has nothing to do that he's probably the second biggest Dodger fan I know <laughs> in terms of being uh, hired for this position. So, uh, Miguel Munoz. Or, as Audrey likes to put it, uh, the president of the Dodger Club here at Mount Sac. Um, I, I want to thank uh, Doctor for uh, allowing me to be uh, in this position. Uh, I really enjoy being where I'm at and just within the admissions, the, the family that I grew within that. Um, just overall, just the, the passion to help students and just, just being here. Uh, just really just the opportunities and the individuals that I get to work with. Um, just being a, a former student of the EOPS program and just individuals just meeting around overall on campus within the student services. So thank you all for uh, just being here and uh, glad to be here in person. Let me, let me get that out there as well. So thank you all. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I requested not to go after Tom, but I, always, I mean after George, sorry. <laughs> But uh, just here to introduce our, our, one of our newest financial aid specialists, Cindy Shea. Uh, hello, hi, 
Hi, my name is Cindy Shea, financial aid specialist. I have 17 years of financial aid experience under my belt. I most recently came from working for Glendale Community College. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from UCR, and I currently live in Hacienda Heights, and so I really appreciate being able to live close to work and be able to contribute to my community. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I am here to introduce a new employee for REACH who is a transfer from the Arts Division. So they obviously heard about the rumors and stories about student services, and they, once I confirmed them, they decided that they had to be part of student services. So, so I want to introduce Rebecca Cabrera. Thank you. Good morning. As you know, my name is Rebecca Cabrera. I'm the Administrative Specialist 3 to REACH, to the REACH program. Um, I started December 6, 2021, so I'm fairly new. And as Jesse said, I came from the Arts Division. So even though I'm new to Student Services, I'm not new to uh, Mount SAC. I've been working here for a little over seven years. Prior to coming to Mount SAC, I worked for Walnut Valley Unified School District, where I was assigned to Maple Hill Elementary and then to Walnut High School. I'm a first-generation college grad. I um, obtained my degree here at Mount Sac many, many years ago. And I'm proud to be back here now as an employee. I'm looking forward to getting to know and, and, and meeting as many people as I can within student services and learning all the programs here. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hello, everyone. Malia Flood. Um, I have to say that February 15th, I just celebrated my one-year anniversary at Mount Sac. And um, when I interviewed for the position, I told Audrey and President Scroggins that this was my dream job, and I was right on. So I'm honored to serve and um, at a place that's it's so incredibly student-centered with such um, fantastic leadership. Um, so it's my... Come on out. He's hiding in the back. Come on out. It's, it's my privilege to introduce Seth Myers, Dr. Seth Myers. You all know that he has served as Assistant Director of Health Services in the Behavioral Health role. Um, and he has stepped into the interim position as Director of Health Services um, upon the retirement of Marty Whitford, who served as the Director for a number of years here at Mount Sac. So, um, it's a privilege to work with Seth. He's doing a great job in the interim world. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you. Um, it's great to be here. Um, I, um, I'm really happy in my role um, and grateful for it. Um, it's, uh, I do a million different things through the course of a day, and so it keeps me uh, learning every day and engaged. So um, thank you. Um, I'm going to keep my um, words short um, and next introduce a couple of the new hires we have in student health services. I'll start with Jose Pena. Um, Jose is not able to be here today. Um, he's not feeling well, but I just want to say a few quick words about him. Um, Jose has been with Mount Sac for many years as a registered nurse. Um, because of some major staffing changes we've had with um, Marty's retirement, we needed someone on the medical side to um, step up and help fill in a major gap. So um, Jose um, did that um, and took on the role as interim special project manager um, and did it really out of service. I don't know um, how much he was interested in taking on some of the really challenging demands that the position has brought, um, but he did it out of service. Um, and so we are so grateful. He's a pleasure to work with. Um, he's a great researcher, um, and that has been required as he manages a lot of the COVID demands that we have. Um, he's a great clinician, but um, also has a skill set socially that makes him, um, I think, a great manager. So um, if we could just give him a quick round of applause, even though he's not here. And then finally, um, I want to introduce Tim Leslie, who is here today. Um, Tim will be finishing his doctorate soon, um, but he is a licensed clinician with us currently. Started as a professional expert 
Um, and I just want to make the comment that I know sometimes we use the term liberally team player, but that really does define who Tim is. Um, Tim never says no to a request. Um, he always figures out a way to adapt and to do it. He's really a, a symbol, I think, of the student health services staff in that way. He will do workshops, he will do sessions, he will go into classes and do presentations. So I'm grateful for him and just want to say thank you. And do you want to say a few quick words? All right, thank you, Seth. Um, hi, again, my name is Tim Leslie. I know some of you are familiar with me. I started here as a professional expert in 2017. Was very excited to finally be able to get a position here permanently. I'm a classified staff, very passionate about students and really reimagining mental health and how we reach students, aside from just doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. So I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> so um, I want to introduce to you some new members of the high school outreach team, with the first one uh, being Dr. Joel Monroy. <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. Uh, just wanted to say hello and I'm very excited to be able to return to student services. Uh, I started five and a half years ago with the almighty high school outreach team uh, with Tarek, Salote, and Blanca. We both came in together, um, been amazing years and I was able to have the opportunity to be the director of dual enrollment for about three years, and I'm very excited to be back and be able to uh, provide that amazing support for our future students coming into Mount Sac and be able to support such an amazing outreach team. So thank you very much. And now I want to introduce Elizabeth Long, who is our new administrative specialist three. Long. Um, I am brand new to Mount Sac. I am a junior college believer and graduate, though, from our noble neighbor up the road, of Citrus. But I am, I am a, a firm convert to the, to the junior college model and the value and virtue that it has in our communities. I come to you by way of Pomona Unified School District. <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> sorry, my roots are showing. Um, but uh, I, I've worked at the district office for a number of years supporting their director of secondary education and all of our high schools in that district. So my heart is very much dedicated to this community and, to, and I'm intimate with their struggles and I'm sympathetic to them. So I'm here to help and I'm really grateful to be here. So thank you. And now I'm proud to introduce Rogelio Medrano, who is one of our two new outreach specialists uh, with an emphasis and focus on our dream and foster youth. Hello, everyone. My name is Rogelio Medrano. Uh, I'm pretty much coming through, uh, through a full circle. Uh, so I'm a Mount Sac alumni, so I actually attended here Mount Sac back in 2014 to 2017. Uh, and then I was, and I came from Sierra Vista High School from Baldwin Park. Um, and then I transferred to Berkeley after being here at Mount Sac for three years. Um, so I'm very excited to be able to come back to Mount Sac and to help those students. Uh, and I also had an outreach specialist, her name was Nayeli, so she was pretty much the one that guided me to Mount Sac. And I'm, I'm excited and grateful to be able to do what she did for me uh, with other students. Uh, and I'm excited to collaborate with you all. Thank you. And lastly, I'd like to introduce Omar Hernandez, who is also our new outreach specialist. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Hernandez. I'm a high school outreach specialist, uh, brand new to Mount Sac, not an alum. Um, but I'm coming from the CSU, uh, from Dominguez Hills over in Carson, so I'm super excited to be here with you guys. First gen, college student, uh, proud DACA recipient, uh, undocumented, so always here to serve our students, especially our undocumented families. Um, and just really, really happy to be here. Everyone's been so nice and welcoming, and uh, I'm excited to continue to meet everybody else. So thank you for having us and having me. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm a little shorter. 
Uh, so I get the great pleasure of introducing our new Bridge Administrative Specialist, Jasmine Mendoza. Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine Mendoza. Um, I am super honored to be here and um, I am actually a Mount Sac and Bridge alumni, so I'm really happy to be working with a program that did so much for me and work with an amazing team and just help um, all the students, um, first gen like myself, and just work with all of you and collaborate with all you. So thank you for having me. And for those of you that know, we've had some retirements in our career services area and some reorganization going on. So we get, I get to present our very first new career specialist today, and that is Christina Martinez. Hi, everyone. My name is Christina Martinez. It's also a full circle for me. I was a Mount Sac. I am a Mount Sac alumni as well. Um, I really came to Mount Sac during a time that I didn't really know what career to pursue. And here I figured out, you know, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, and full circle. I'm so excited to be here and be part of the reorganization of the Career Center, so thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Francisco Dorame. I serve as the Dean of Counseling, and uh, I'm ready to introduce uh, the hires that we have for our uh, counseling uh, department and special programs. So uh, first up, is our student services program specialist uh, within the completion center, and that's Cassandra Rubio. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Cassie, so if you see me on campus, say hi. I've been here for four years with the study abroad program previously, but I'm just really happy to be in person. I feel like it's so much better to see faces and you know, be in community, and I'm just really excited to help grow out the Completion Center on campus. All right, thank you, Cassie. Uh, next up is our project program coordinator for an effort that we're doing uh, with the Navigate system, and we will be uh, doing what we call an early alert, so she is our program coordinator for that project, and I want to introduce Yolanda Aru. Good morning, buenos dias. I was inspired at five o'clock in the morning, and I wrote a little something. So if you just give me a couple minutes, I'll read to you what came to my mind. My name is Yolanda Aru, originally from Zacatecas, Mexico. I was raised on a farm, El Rancho del Durazno. My parents left me in Mexico when I was just three years old and returned with my brother when I was six. I know what it's like to be separated from parents and I, I know firsthand the immigration experience. I share my history because my experience helps me to understand and to connect with students here at Mount Sac. I'm an advocate for students as I have strived to help them have a voice and share their stories. One example of this is a new employee welcome day. That was one of my big projects when I worked in professional and organizational development, also known as POD. New Day, in the past, has speakers, mainly leaders from all areas of campus, but not student representation. So I decided to create and implement a student panel who was diverse, not only culturally, but diverse in personal experiences. This demonstrated to our new classified employees the struggles and the triumphs of our committed students. I saw how student stories touched the hearts of our new employees and how these stories connected with the professional's own journey, many times leaving them with tears in their eyes. These student panels highlighted our mission and our vision of inclusion and equity. I help raise awareness and empathy among our new employees, encouraging them to support students in whatever way they could in their new way, in their new role. In two weeks, I will be here five years, and I am most grateful to be part of student services. I am most grateful to have the opportunity to volunteer with REACH, Rising, Star, uh, Rising Scholars, 
a number of programs like um, the food pantry and other things that I've gotten involved because I really cared about the student experience. So I am grateful. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias to Don Francisco Dorami and Lina Soto for this opportunity. Thank you. So I'm Don Francisco. <laughs> I like that. Uh, our next up, our next up is uh, our business analyst, Kenny Yen. All right. Thank you, Francisco. Hi, everyone. My name is Kenny. Uh, I'm also a fellow alumni here at Mount Sac. Uh, go, 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 go Mounties. Did a stint uh, then transferred to Fullerton, did a stint in Hollywood for, for 10 years. Don't worry, you haven't seen me on screen, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it's great. I worked with a lot of international folks, a lot of different diverse groups. So, and look, coming back here to Mount Sac, you see everyone's really diverse here. It's a great group of people. Uh, looking forward to working with you all. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, I want to go ahead and introduce our uh, administrative specialist three uh, within the transfer center. Uh, this is the first position that we've had uh, within the uh, transfer center. So I want to introduce Selena Robles. Hello. Um, as you said, I'm Selena Robles, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm also an alum of Mount Sac. And I was a working parent as I attended Mount Sac. It took me a while, but by the time I graduated from Mount Sac, I had four different, uh, two degrees, AAs, one in math and science. I spent a long time studying math. <laughs> and then um, I also had one in um, art, and then I had one in graphic arts. And then um, I got a, uh, I think it was a gallery exhibition design. And then I went on and I transferred to uh, Fullerton. And I studied uh, fine art. And I ended up getting um, two. Uh, I was a double major. So a bachelor's in uh, fine art drawing and painting. And then I got um, my second one in art history. And then I went on to get my master's degree in museum education and gallery exhibition design. And then I was always working here at Mount Sac as a student. So I was hired as a student. I came back several times, professional expert. And then finally, I got the job working in the art gallery here. And I know a lot of you will say, we have an art gallery. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm happy to tell you that we do have an art gallery. And I've worked there for um, approximately four years. And then I was so happy when a uh, transfer uh, center needed an admin because I had wanted more hours. That was. Uh, my reason for applying for the position. I was so happy to get it because I'm very happy to be here at Mount Sac. And I'm so glad to see all of the faces you know, I see out here in the audience. It's so glad to meet you in person. So just come by and say hi to me. Uh, I'm in the Transfer Center. And I'm uh, so happy to meet you. Thank you. I apologize for that phone going off in the middle of her talk. That was dumb Francisco. Um, <laughs> um, I just want to, again, congratulate and welcome all our new student service employees. This is what makes student services here at Mount Sac such a great place to work and, uh, and the leader across the state. I'm not sure what's next, so I will look down to see what we got going on here. All right, Christina. Thank you all. Shake it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everyone take out their phones. Mm -hmm. We're doing a Kahoot game. Okay, so there usually there's like a fun little game music playing, but just in case for um, loyal, you know, royalty rights, we just want to make sure we're going to be safe there. So we'll be our own entertainment and energy and our vibe here. Um, you see the game pin for those who may never have played Kahoot before. Uh, you can pull up your phone, go to Kahoot.it, 
and they're gonna ask you for your game pin and you can create your own username. In the meantime, I'm Christine Romeo. Sorry to introduce myself. And I'm Mari Delacero. Hello, everyone. Yes, and if you don't know, we are the um, two full-time full staff who are answering the phones for Vaxar Test Hotline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we also have Wonderful, wonderful people helping us. We've got Abby Ativalu. I think she's out there in the back. Yeah. yeah. The back. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. We also got Marosa, who's answering the phone. And we got Jana Crawford and Kaylin are also helping us answer their phones when they've got extra time to help. So it's been really, really helpful. Thank you. So wow, we've got 106 players. Wow, you guys, that's awesome. Okay, it's, the number's still climbing, so we'll just, we'll give you another minute. Oh, Don Thomas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> got a big dog. <laughs> Fabulous queen. Oops, sorry. Okay, it's still growing, still climbing. Limon. 136, 136, okay. Oh. 138, okay. 10 more seconds. Star Vax. Oh, I think I know who that is. <laughs> I want to be on vacation too. <laughs> hey, who's that? I know. Who's, who's the other Mara here? Hmm. Okay. I see you guys. I see the number still climbing. Oh, I lost somebody. Okay, come back. All right, you guys are in? You guys are in? It's going back and forth. 142, 43. We're losing someone. We can go up to 2,000 players, so this is, you know, <laughs> 143. Okay, I'm gonna hit start. Anybody, we good, we're good? I'm gonna hit start. Okay, all right. We're okay, I'm gonna go. Oh my gosh, the numbers keep dropping. What's happening? Start the game. All okay. right, <laughs> five, four, three, two, one, hitting start. Okay, who do students and staff have to contact if they have to complete a medical religious exemption? <laughs> contact tracers in red, HR accommodations in blue, test or vax hotline in yellow, vax or test hotline in green. This game is a speed game. The quicker you answer, you do get ranked higher. And it is competitive. <laughs> Okay, two more seconds. Next question. Oh, yay, the answer is HR accommodations. Although I believe for spring, that is complete now, okay? Princess Abby at the top. Ooh, Jessica B at the top, too. All right, they've got ties. Okay, question two. Can my mom come visit me on campus? Red, no, she must be a Mount Sac student. Yellow, yes, as long as she's outside. Blue, yes, for a brief visit and a Mount Sac visitor health check form online. Green, no visitors allowed. Sometimes no visitors are allowed. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is, how come it, oh, it's quick already. Um, Doo -doo. All right. 
So yes, as long as they fill out, the visitor health check form is online, they can have a brief visit. Here we go, next. Wow. Oh. Hey, you's taking the top. All right. Can students still be dropped for non-compliance? Red, yes, March 3, March 25 are dropped for non-compliance dates. Blue, no, everyone is set for spring. Five seconds. Yes. So tomorrow's a drop for dead, um, drop for non-compliance. For those who are newly enrolled in like the last week, they have this week to load their first information for the vaccine. Okay. Hey you, fabulous queens, still taking the top two. All right. Does a student employee need cleared for account to take a COVID test on campus? Red, yes, blue, no. Music makes a difference. It does. We need the music. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right, got 145 answers. How do we move it? I don't ever speed it up. We got to slow down. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Yes, you all need the account. You can't just walk up without an account, okay? <laughs> Fabulous queen overtook Princess Abby, all right. I can share my cleared for a link with my friend who can't find theirs. Blue true, red false. I like the conversations that's happening. <laughs> I think maybe there's some confusion. <laughs> False, you cannot share. We had that happen. We had a very helpful student give their link to their friend and their friend loaded their vaccine info and it went into that person's account. So it's a, the link is custom for each individual, okay. All right, fabulous. Oh, oh. Princess Abby. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what kind of file format will cleared for accept to process my vaccination info? Red, PDF, yellow, H E I C live image. We see that a lot. Blue, Word, green, JPEG, or PNG? that the system has taken in the PDF, but you will often get stuck in a queue for like manual review. We just do not like it. So the system will automatically process JPEG PNGs. Okay, here we go. Okay, Princess Happy. How many test sites are available this spring? Red, five sites like fall. Yellow, one site by the ATM build, um, building four. Blue, four sites, which is three PCR test sites plus one antigen test site, or three sites in green. about the antigen test is it's not open to anyone, right? It's, you specifically have to have a referral from your contact tracer to go there. Otherwise, the other three PCR tests, you can go anytime. <laughs> Fabulous queen, all right. 
Question eight, who can we contact about issues with cleared for? Red, contact tracers, 6900. Yellow, HR accommodations. Blue, cleared for tech. Or green, a VEX or test hotline. Contact her. her. <laughs> Da -da -da -da. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> what? Us. You call us. <laughs> Take a picture. Extension 5122. <laughs> We're here for you. <laughs> Rolling. All right. When do employees have to upload their booster and cleared for? This is faculty as well. Red, today, yellow, yesterday, blue, tomorrow, green, and next week. <laughs> like, what? And if you don't, if you have not loaded your booster by that deadline, you have to test every seven days, is my understanding. <laughs> Yesterday! <laughs> we'll be calling you all. <laughs> And number one, number one, oh, superhero girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Give me one second. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Should we go over this? We could go over this last one. Yeah? No? This one? No, no, no. No, Sorry. Okay. Can we have all the managers come up so we can do your presentations? If you can start like we did the new employee. Um, Remember to upload your boosters. <laughs> so we'll have reconnect first. Hello, everybody. I know. <laughs> I heard. I'm going to talk really fast because each of us only have one minute to speak. So I'm a sprinter, and I can do this. <laughs> so everybody, my name is Zelda Bolden, and I am the manager of the Reconnect and Engage project. And our goal for the for this project is to specifically what it says. We are here to reconnect and engage students with the different resources that are available to them on campus, whether that is the financial aid office, admissions and records, um, tutoring services, if they need food cards, um, book vouchers, uh, if they need assistance with FAFSA, we do a workshop for our students. If they need to do anything in the admissions and records, I know admissions and records see me coming, and they, uh, 
<laughs> they turn and, and run. But I'm there to assist all students with any sort of concerns, issues. Once we get them here, we like to keep them here. So we are doing everything within our power with the different and various departments on campus to keep them here once, once they get here. Um, I am not going to go over the major issues because I only have one minute and I am done. I know, Seth, we need you. Then that's me. Woohoo, summer programs! Hi! <laughs> So I get to represent summer programs, and I guess I'm moving next. Oh my gosh, help. Okay, so uh, Summer Bridge, they're already taking applications. Tell everyone you know. Um, it's really easy. If you need help, contact the bridge team. But, you know, this is the 24th year of great success of helping students get the right start at Mount Sac. Application priority deadline is April 15th. Um, please tell your students, your kids, your neighbors, uh, you know, the applications, they're filling up fast, so we wanna make sure that the students can get a, a head start, take a general education course, a counseling one course, and an LCOM class. So they will get three courses to start before the fall. Um, if you have questions, like I said, contact the bridge team. I don't know if you guys can raise your hand. There they are, and they'll be happy to help. <laughs> Let's see, next. Seriously, how do I do this slide? This should be easy. Just face bar, gotcha. Thank you. All right. <laughs> First step, our summer transition enrichment program. It actually was born out of the bridge program. It's a two week counseling one course that introduces students, introduction to college, gets them again with a counselor, we help them with education plans, getting to know the resources. In just two weeks, we have three sessions. The first two weeks, second two weeks, and third two weeks. There is no application for this. All they have to do is sign up for summer, and they can put in that they're interested on our website. And then we will actually reach back out and help them with the process. So they get the same, so very similar benefits, not as many units as the bridge program, not as intense for the six weeks, but they do get a one unit. They still get to develop friendships and they, um, we're gonna be offering the courses in person, hybrid and fully online. So if you know students that would be interested that this would be a great fit for them, uh, please direct them to our STEP website and we'll be happy to reach back out to them and help them through. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, all right. So I'm here to talk about Promise Plus. Um, basically, students who come through STEP or Summer Bridge this summer, we will automatically be qualifying them behind the scenes to see if they're eligible to enter into our program. So if a student comes through Summer Bridge or STEP, Promise will be going through to see if they meet our criteria. So as you can see on the screen, for the sake of time, I'm not really gonna go into it, but they must meet all of those criteria on the screen. Um, and we will go through and reach out to them if there's something that, for example, if they need to update residency or update their major, then Promise will reach out to them directly to make sure that they can qualify. How do they participate? They come through Summer Bridge or STEP. They meet all of our criteria, and then in the fall, they register for a minimum of six units. Promise students can be part-time or full-time students. Um, and then the, we just require that they um, attend a workshop and meet with a counselor once a semester, and that they, um, maintain a 2.0 GPA. And what do they get for all of those requirements? Lots and lots of goodies. We give them book grants, we give them uh, payment of mandatory fees, not tuition, but mandatory fees. Um, they get food cards for on campus, for groceries for their families, laptop loans, they get calculator loans, Mount Sac goodies and hoodies and shirts and lots of support from our own Promise counselors and the program partnerships that we've made across campus. Hi everyone, Desiree from Scholarships and Financial Aid. Just want to remind everyone that our Mount Sac Scholarship Program is currently open. 
Our deadline this year, go Teresa. Um, our deadline this year is the 18th of April. We have over $400,000 to give away to students. We have hundreds of scholarships. And the amazing thing about our program is that students only have to use one application. We, the only eligibility for the spring is a student has to be currently enrolled and planning to continue their education next academic year, whether it be transferring or coming back to Mount Sac. So the major, all of your students should be eligible. Um, some reminders, students do not have to be US citizens. So any student international, dream students can definitely apply. Transfer students should be applying for this. The scholarships will follow them to their transfer institution. We have tons of application workshops. Workshops where we just teach them about the application, how to log on, um, teach them how to answer their short answer questions. And the big thing that we want you to all to sell to your students is there's no essay. A lot of students sometimes are intimidated by that. You all know we have amazing students, diamonds in the rough. We have amazing, amazing students that don't know sometimes how amazing they are. So we need you to convince them that they are worthy of scholarships, that donors want to invest in them. Um, please request us to come out. Teresa, myself, the scholarship team, whoop, whoop, will come out and do a, a presentation for your class. For those of you counselors or teaching, we will come do it for your program or in your center. Zelda, we just had a student this week win how much? Ten a $10,000 scholarship. She didn't think she was worthy. She didn't think she could do it. She just did it on a whim. She's now $10,000 towards her education. It's possible our students are winners and they deserve to be these scholars. Please, please encourage them to apply. Thank you. Good morning, financial aid. Just wanna uh, uh, share three different efforts we're doing to feel free to share with our students. Uh, first one is tonight, we have the March 2nd. We always hear about the March 2nd deadline for financial aid. That's really a priority deadline, especially for state financial aid grants. So we have an event today that goes to midnight. We have our financial aid staff available for students. The link is on the presentation here. It's open for all students. Uh, they don't need to be registered. They could be prospective students and a lot of information to help them fill out the, the FAFSA or Dream Act application before the March 2nd deadline. Uh, second thing we're, we're doing moving forward is a treat, your, a treat yourself, uh, have a taste of financial aid. That's how we're labeling it. <laughs> I had to practice that. I had to practice that a little bit. But uh, more information to come on that. That's basically uh, coordinating with the scholarship's office and basic, uh, basic needs to help students with the financial aid process. Uh, we want to share, just generally speaking, we have about 77% of credit enrolled students that apply for either a FAFSA or a DREAM Act. That should be higher. We're going to work on uh, very targeted approaches. This is one of the efforts to help increase that number. Ideally, we should have 100%, right? Because like, like uh, we share with all students, you never know. Put your, put your, uh, your number in there. You might be eligible. Also want to share about if every, every California resident applied, about 97% of students, this is pretty much statewide, would be eligible at the very least for a promised fee waiver, okay? So if they paid fees for fall, they will get their money back. So the student gets the money back, not the parents, so I don't know. So we always do retroactive awarding, so make sure we, we inform the students that it's not too late. That's always our motto that we do for the spring. It's not too late to apply for this current year, 2021-22, and for er and, and a good time to apply before March 2nd for the 22-23 uh, academic year. Um, also, financial aid, uh, when, when we moved out of COVID, we uh, closed our lab that's across the way. Uh, we're gonna reopen it uh, slowly, effective March 17th. So we have the hours posted there on, on Thursdays. For a few hours, we're gonna start that, uh, that those hours. So if you have students that need more hand-on help with either filling out the application, completing the verification process, appeal, feel free to refer them to our, our lab effective uh, March 17th, okay? Next. Okay, so other thing we hear this, a higher education emergency relief funds, we know it as HERF. The, the deadline to expend that money is May. We have about $12 million remaining. We, what we do just to summarize this is three different efforts per term, okay? So students could reapply again. So we have one effort that would be automatically selected for a grant if the student had applied for a FAFSA or DREAM Act. The other part of money is students could apply on their own behalf. So in our, in our website, in the general financial aid website up top right, there's a button, that, uh, there's a, a bar that says uh, emergency aid, they click on it, they would be considered for a grant that way. 
The other one is a referral. That's one thing I want to share with you. Everybody should have access to the referral form. If you haven't, send us an email. We can resend it to you. And that's for you when you work with students one-on-one. -on -one. If there's any emergency need, feel free to refer them. We, we review the student's case. We advocate for them to fill out the application. FAFSA, they don't need to to have her, but we really highly recommend that. So feel free to refer students for spring, okay? Uh, one thing I, I did want to share with that, the application, they don't need to be enrolled. I know that sounds kind of interesting, but they need to be, they need to intend to enroll. So what we do when the student's not enrolled, we talk to them, we, we maximize their financial aid resources, encouraging them to enroll for the next term. There's still short-term classes to do so, so we're using that as a, as a kind of carrot to enroll as well, okay? All right, thank you. Good morning, buenos dias. Victor Rojas, Director of TRIO Programs and Rising Scholars. I'll be brief, because Lucy is getting mad at me. Uh, so uh, just two quick notes. Uh, we are recruiting uh, ACES students, so um, we'll send these flyers out. Uh, but we're also recruiting for our summer science transfer experience, and please send them our way. This year we will be offering two, two sections, our, our traditional geo and um, physics once again this year. Um, we, and we will be going to Santa Barbara this year, so the, car <laughs> the, the, the carrot is back. Uh, in terms of Upward Bound, our, our, up, our update and a quick shout out to Stephanie Gonzalez, uh, who I nominated for a TRIO uh, Employee of the Year at West Stop. I hope she wins. Um, but thanks to Stephanie's efforts, our students are getting into these amazing schools. And this is huge for us because uh, these students have been online mostly. So uh, this is huge. So as, as you see up there so far, but we expect um, uh, a lot of them to get into uh, very good schools. Uh, next slide. And in terms of Rising Scholars, uh, we will from now going forward uh, recognize April as Second Chance Month. Uh, so we will be having uh, events. We will be celebrating uh, Rising Scholars tenacity. Uh, the, the one thing I do want to draw your attention to, I know you can't see it here, but on April 29th, we will have homie training. Uh, it's going to be through POD. Uh, so if you want to be uh, helping the cause, be more sensitive to our students, uh, we will have that training once again. And more information to, uh, will go out. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would first like to just say half a day uh, and hello to all the Student Services Family Division. Uh, my name is Dr. Andy Farron Sims, and I serve as your Director of Student Life. I'd also like to take the time, um, it's never too late, to acknowledge my responsibility uh, and my commitment to honor the place and space that I occupy today, which is the unceded ancestral land. Um, thank you of the Kitch Nation, the Heshiman Nation, the Tongva Tribe, and the village of Pumukanga. Uh, and beha on behalf of our Student Life family, so thank you for that, on behalf of our Student Life family, I have the privilege of sharing uh, that Student Life and Associated Student Services has many upcoming events. Our Student Life uh, vision is to cultivate ethical leaders. So you'll see here that we have student conduct. We are the home of student conduct. We are the home of student grievances. Those QR codes do work, so if you want to take out your camera uh, and save those websites. We are also the home of the lost and found. So we want to connect. Yep. Yes, lost and found auction. How many of us have bought great things? Me, yeah, thank you, yeah. And if you lost it uh, last year, sorry, it's part of our auction coming up uh, in the fall, it's okay. Uh, but I also wanna say that we did kick off yesterday our campus's leadership education and development program. Please refer students to this. Uh, it is a premier leadership program on campus, a certificate program for our students so that they can enhance their leadership skills. We also have a volunteer community fair coming up next Wednesday. Yes, there are still volunteers, volunteer groups that want our students to help teach them about uh, social justice, uh, their responsibility to the community. So please join us on that day. And then for Student Life Office, we wanna remind everybody that the Student Life Center did reopen. We are open for students, and it is a place where students can hang out, relax, it is also the home of associated students, but we also have a meditation space. We have a lactation suite uh, and ping pong and foosball are back folks. So yes. <laughs> so with regards to associated students, we want to share that their vision is to empower every student. As you can see, you, if you don't already have our spring calendar, I'm sure that Geo can get you a stack as many as you need, but we are kicking off uh, 
events-wise. Today is AS Visibility, so you'll see them out today and tomorrow. Uh, we have our Inspiring Women ceremony that we are going to have on campus. Uh, we have Pizza with the Presidents, and then we also are having Join a Club. So there are over 60 organizations. They are so happy to be back uh, on campus. And then most importantly, we need to continue to empower more leaders to develop and, and learn about their inner activists. So we need your help in encouraging them to apply to be a leader for next year. So we are gonna be searching for AS president, vice president, inner club council chairs, uh, and our Senate chairs. So refer your students to that. And then last but not least, I also need your help. Our student life family needs your help. It's not just us, it's a community. And I deputized the managers l last week. So I'm deputizing all of you now in, in an abridged form. We are a public campus. Um, so free speech does occur. Take a picture of this slide, I'm not gonna read it, but basically it says we need your help. Our student life office does have a process to check them in, but because we're a public institution, they aren't required by law to do that. However, we can and do enforce our health and safety guidelines at this moment. We would love for you to continue to walk by these folks, but also tell your students, protect your information. The Dean of Student Services did share this out on the portal to all students, they do not have to sign. They do not have to give their information. And they are not sponsored by our campus or the Student Life Office. So please help them understand they can just keep on walking. And those folks who get paid by the signature will eventually go away if they get no signatures. So with that, I say thank you. I also want to just acknowledge and thank my Student Life staff, uh, any associated student officers that are here, their planning and advocacy to provide engagement opportunities for your students is just profound. So I have an honor of working with them. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Koji Wasugi, Dean of Student Services. And I have an easy one. One word. <laughs> Commencement. Say it with me. Commencement 2022. So if you look on the screen, it's kind of hard to see, but this is uh, an image from last year's commencement at Hilmer Lodge Stadium. We had uh, over 900 students participate. We're anticipating filling up those seats even more this year. And if you can see the uh, speaker on the scoreboard, if you cl look closely enough, it is our Vice President of Student Services, Dr. Audrey Yamagunoji. Um, <laughs> so we, if you had, didn't have a chance to uh, participate last year uh, as a faculty reader or as one of the uh, workers to support uh, the facilitation of the ceremony, uh, please consider Friday, June 10th at 5.30 at Hillman Lodge Stadium and come and help out and we could use your help and we'll let's celebrate our student success. All right, I think that's it, thank you. Hello again, hi, <laughs> Tanya Robles and Dr. Tisha Hagler and we are the co-chairs for the Grad Fest Task Force. Um, you may have heard Dr. Scroggins in the morning talk about a graduation drive-through. It's not an, actually grad, an actual graduation drive-through, what it is it's an opportunity for students to come and pick up a free cap and gown, a tassel, a sash, uh, a graduation packet, really. And for the special programs that you see listed here um, to provide their, um, what do you call it? Their special program um, sashes and, and items that they give to the students. We're super excited about this event. Last year, we had roughly about 600 students that came by. Uh, this year, we are looking to expand that effort as we do have a few additional uh, programs included, that being Rising Scholars. Uh, so we're excited about adding that program to this initiative. Um, again, these are all the programs that have been um, that have been included in this effort that do have a caseload approach. So as you do may, as you may see that not all special, uh, specialized programs are included in this effort. The ones that are included are the ones that have a caseload approach. This event will take place in parking lot A. Um, it will be held on a Saturday, Saturday, May 21st. Um, it is a day long event. We're super, super excited about it. More to come about this as we're looking forward to creating a memorable um, experience for our graduating students. Okay. And the way students will be informed is that we're going to work directly with the special programs and the special programs will provide invitations to eligible students. So stay tuned. Um, and we may be reaching out and tapping some shoulders uh, also for some staff to help support the event as well. So thank you.
Hello everyone, I am Dr. Julie Marquez and I am presenting on EOPS. Most of you are very familiar with EOPS. We've been around for 52 years, going on 53. So we are still looking for students. So again, if you ever have students to refer to our program, we'd be happy to help them. Never be afraid to send them over. Whatever the time of the year it is, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. The most important thing is getting students connected to our programs. And we know that if you believe our students need our program, that we will do our best to help them. But today I want to focus on CARE, which is our program that is under EOPS. So CARE students do have to be EOPS students first. And CARE focuses on our single parent who are considered head of household. These students are receiving cash aid for themselves or their children. And Maria Figueroa, the Maria Hernandez Figueroa, who's waving her hand up there. There's two Maria Figueroas. If you all did the Kahoot game last year, you all would know there's different Marias. And so Maria is the one that usually works with our parenting students. Do send them our way. You know, don't always worry about the eligibility factor. Oftentimes when they come our way, we can determine whether they're a good fit for care or connect them to other resources that are available. And the most important thing is have them apply. Our application is up on the website. Um, and that is care for you. So send them our way, send them to Maria. Maria's back there. If you haven't met her, get to know her. In addition to EOPS Care, uh, we want to take this moment to acknowledge CalWORKS. This is another resource that is available for Mount SAC parenting students. Should you have parents or uh, if you interact with students who identify as a parent, please send them our way. Again, we will go over the eligibility requirements with them, but we definitely want to uh, increase our efforts to help students create uh, experiences with other student parents on campus and help them build community with our parenting students on campus. So again, some of the program services that we specifically offer, students will be able to connect with our uh, faculty for counseling. They'll be able to connect with our program specialists who have direct access and will serve as a liaison with four of our local county offices. Uh, we do have workshops dedicated for our parenting students, again, to help them build a community uh, with other parenting students on campus. And we we do, we are the program to give out the gas cards, okay? So let that be noted. Um, so uh, if you have parents in your program, please send them our way as we would love to connect them with our amazing parents in CalWORKS. And another initiative that we are um, providing uh, for Mount SAC parenting students, any Mount SAC student that identifies as a parent on behalf of CalWORKS Care, which is sponsored by Associated Students, thank you very much. Any Mount SAC student that identifies as a parent, they do not need to be a part of any specialized program, but any student on campus that identifies as a parent, this is our first inaugural parent institute. Can y'all put your hands together? We are super excited about this event. Uh, we do have a keynote speaker, Sade Burrell, who um, is a published, author, a published author, and she too is um, a parent of two, I believe two children. She was a single parent as she was um, aspiring to become a college professor where she serves as faculty at San Diego State University, if I'm not mistaken. Mesa? San Diego, Mesa. Oh, San Diego Mesa College, yes. And she will be our keynote speaker. So if you have um, students that identify as parents, what you have received are flyers for that particular event. We do encourage you to invite your students to register. And just wanna acknowledge the committee who's working on it in case you all have questions. We have Maria who's in the corner there. We have Ana Silvia, Lorena, and Yesenia from CalWORKS. So reach out to any of us for questions. Um, this email is working, we do respond, so send them our way. Last but not least, and also those of you who may be an alumni, student parent, we would love to capture your success story and include you 
in a presentation that we will be including during the Parent Institute. So the official campus-wide announcement went out yesterday. Um, there is a link there for those of you who would like to express interest to be included in this initiative or even future initiatives that we will be creating for our parenting student. Uh, we do want to just thank you in advance for your efforts. Thank you. Good, good morning, everyone. I want to thank Koji for taking 40 seconds up here and sharing his slide. I'll try to beat that. With our Basic Needs Resources Center, I have some information here that uh, we wanted to share with you all. This uh, slide and presentation will be provided to you all, so I don't want to go through the numbers. But I do want to encourage you all as staff members to continue encouraging your students to apply to CalFresh, specifically if they're part of REACH, EOPS, Aspire, and they participate in SEED, and if they uh, received a, an email from financial aid regarding a zero EFC. And I also wanted to uh, share some data about uh, our housing uh, support and our basic needs cars. But I want to focus on our Mountie Fresh food pantry message. Thank you so much for allowing us and helping us normalize our food pantry, encouraging students to uh, attend the food pantry. We want to remind you, remind ourselves and our students about the intent of our food pantry. It is here to serve those that need it the most. For our students that are really struggling, we want them and we want to encourage them to visit our food pantry. So again, you'll get this message. Uh, please share it when you talk to your students. And I want to leave you with some beautiful pictures of our food pantry participants. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm here to represent the Accessibility Resource Centers for Students Access. Woohoo! Access to Unis, okay. Um, we are here to support any student, all students with disabilities. Um, please send them our way. Sometimes students um, may not initially identify as having a disability, so things that you can listen for that, um, and if you hear these words, you can send them our way so that we can help them with the process. If students say they had an IEP in high school, they had a 504 plan, they are seeing a doctor, they're seeing um, a mental health professional, um, they're struggling, then and just send them our way and we can walk them through the process and help them um, get any documentation they might need from the, from the high schools or the, their healthcare professional. Okay, space bar. Also, access is not just about accommodations in the classroom, but we have a lot of wonderful and incredible programs targeted specifically for um, different groups of students to provide um, not only support, but community. Um, we're gonna host a number of events this um, spring semester. Our Disability Awareness Month events in October were a huge success, so we wanna keep that momentum going. Um, we'll have a meet and greet in March. In um, April, our puzzle project team will um, do events for Autism Awareness Month. Um, in May, Disability Pride Month, we plan to do some um, professional development activities and then hold a graduation ceremony um, for our students. So again, um, send students our way. We have um, really cool flyers with our information and a QR code that a student can just snap with their phone that takes them straight to application. So contact us at access at Mount Sac. Edu, and we're happy to provide those flyers to any area so that you can share with your students. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, it's a lot of information coming at you um, very quickly. I'll just share for Student Health Services. Um, this spring, when you see campus-wide announcements from Student Health Services, pay extra close attention because this spring we are rolling out um, some new events, services, and workshops um, that we haven't done before that are really exciting. So pay extra attention to that. And just finally, I'll share um, one direction we are working in in Student Health Services is to be embedded more on campus. So we are moving um, away from just living exclusively in our clinics um, so that we can integrate more on campus. So you'll see us um, in more programs um, than we've been in the past. So um, pay extra attention again to the announcements. Thank you. So it leaves us one minute for questions. <laughs> I apologize. If you want to just send it to me, I will get the 
responses and questions sent out to everybody. We'll also make the PowerPoint available. Be sure to continue to visit the Student Services website. We update it weekly, so there's lots of good information there and links. If anything isn't linked up, please let us know. So I want to thank you all for coming. I understand there's more food out there, so you can go get some more on your way back. I think the doors are automatically opening in one minute in 9B. So thank you all. Have a great spring.